I think I asked you this question before, but what is your tech stack? Is Nest.js part of it? I just started reading some documentation on Nest.js and I've heard that a, there's a lot of demand for Nest.js. I haven't really seen it especially from like first hand, but I'm interested in learning different tech stack anyway. So next Nest.js, not to be confused with Next.js. Nest.js in 2025 still worth it for backend developers? If you have answers, then let me know down in the comments. It's an article written by Takashi Yamamoto, infrastructure engineer on Leapcell. Nest.js, still worth investing in 2025 while it stands the test of time. In 2025, amid the ever proliferating landscape of JavaScript backend framework frameworks, Nest.js remains the unrivaled leader in enterprise level application development. Since its initial release in 2017, this Node.js based framework has not only withstood the pressure from predecessors like Express and Koa, but also fended off challenges from rising stars such as Fastify and Adonis. Instead, it has amassed over 60k stars on GitHub, securing a spot among the world's top five backend frameworks, what enables Nest.js to break the three-year cycle cur curse of front-end frameworks, What's what irreplaceable reasons make it a top choice in 2025. Personally, I use the MERN uh, tech stack, so that is MongoDB, Express, Node, and React. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of arguments to be made for Nest.js as this introduction introduces. One, architectural philosophy from chaotic freedom to structural elegance. Nest.js core competitive advantage lies in its competence, complete solution to the loss of architectural control problem in Node.js backend development, while early Express offered flexibility, it lacked built-in architectural standards, resulting in vastly differing code styles in team collaborations. Consider the same user authentication function. An Express project might exhibit 10 different implementation approaches. So common chaotic approach in Express. We have a post request that's login, username, request body, writing business logic and database operations directly in the root. <clears throat> so there's a SQL query, and then you make that, you send that off to the uh, root. A DB query, I see, I see. Whereas in contrast, Nest.js enforces a modular dependency injection architecture, allowing even beginners to write standardized code. So we have a module, controller, controller, user controller, post, this is where we define the post, injectable, exp export class, user service, constructor, and async, validate user, User not found. Do we not need the query? Or maybe it's already implicitly in there. The di direct benefits of the architecture are over 40% improvement in code maintainability. Based on SJS's official 2024 developer survey and an average 50% reduction in onboarding time for new team members. I do definitely find this to be much less dense, much less easier to read than this right here because this jump anything that's query and writes like this is always jumps back and forth from one language to another and that's kind of tough number two deep typescript integration the ultimate solution for type safety backend development in 2025 is far beyond the era of dynamic type freedom typescript has become the standard for enterprise enterprise level development Nest.js was the first mainstream framework designed entirely based on TypeScript from the ground up rather than being adopted later. This deep integration manifests in three aspects. Automatic type in interface, 
inference. Controller parameters and service method return values automatically get type hints. Declarator metadata. Implementing declar declarative programming using TypeScript declarators. Okay, data validation takes effect automatically. Export class, create user user data uh, string. Okay, dependency injection type binding. Automatic type checking for service dependencies. Compared to the express TypeScript combination, Next.js eliminates a large amount of type declaration boilerplate code, increasing average type coverage by 35% and reducing type-related bugs in production by over 60%. Number three, ecosystem, one-stop enterprise-grade solution. Next.js ecosystem can be called Swiss Army Knife of Node.js's backends, in featuring high-quality modules maintained by the official team or community for everything from database interactions to authentication, API documentation, and microservices. Seamless database ORM integration. Type ORM, officially recommended, supporting MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, etc. Prisma, added official adapter in 2024, offering better type safety. Mongoose, encapsulated best practices for MongoDB, authenticated and authorization system, passport module, support JWT, OAuth2, local strategies, etc. CASL, fine-grained permission control, automatic API documentation generation, Swagger module, automatically generates open API documentation based on decorators, microservices and method message queues, built-in support for RabbitMQ, Kafka, Redis, etc. This out-of-the-box ecosystem eliminates the need for developers to test compatibility between various libraries, saving an average of 30% configuration time. That's all, all of these, I wonder if they compound this say saving time. If they compound or if that's overall effect but either way it's just uh yeah nestjs the more i read about it the more convincing the more convinced i am number four core differences from other frameworks if express advantage scenarios small projects quick prototypes shortcomings compared to nestjs no architectural constraints manual tool chain integration required weak typescript support I think that's why I've used a lot of Express because I've only really worked on my personal projects, which have been uh, small projects and slash just doing quick prototypes. Fastify, extreme performance requirements requires many. So extreme performance requirements is the adventure scenarios and shortcomings is that requirements many requires many third party libraries for enterprise level features, relatively narrow ecosystem. Adonis JS, full stack development is the advantage scenarios and shortcomings are smaller community size weak microservice support coa advantage scenarios middleware flexibility but the shortcomings are loose architecture lacks modern features in terms of performance nestjs's performance ex excellent performed excellently in 2024 benchmark tests. Single instance QPS reaches 8,500 expressed at approximately 9,200, a difference of only 8%. Memory usage is 15% higher than Express, but much lower than Spring Boot, about uh, one, one out of five. What is it? Fifth, one fifth. <laughs> Supports automatic clustering with linear performance growth after horizontal scaling. For 90%, 95% of enterprise applications, this slight performance difference is completely offset by improved development efficiency. Number five, enterprise grade application cases. Who uses Next.js extensively? Next.js's enterprise grade DNA has gained recognition from top companies worldwide Autodesk, parent company of AutoCAD, refactored backend APIs for 12 of its products using Nest.js, processes over 1 billion requests daily with 99.99% stability. I love seeing this because it shows that it's not just words, it works in practice. Because if it's just words, I always think about, hmm, like what are they not saying? You know, because there's always good side and upside, but seeing this downside, uh, you know, uh, adventure scenarios for other frameworks and seeing this use, 
use cases. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Adidas, e-commerce platform core services based on SGS microservice uh, architecture. Supports real-time inventory synchronization across 30 plus regions globally. Globally, Roche, pharmaceutical company, backend for medical data analysis platform, utilizes NSGS's type safety to ensure accuracy in medical data pr processing. Netflix, some edge services developed with NSGS, achieves rapid iteration by combining its microservices architecture. Domestic cases, multiple business lines with Tencent Cloud and ByteDance. Recommended framework for Tencent Cloud serverless cloud functions, backend services for ByteDance, Sys, education product lines. The collective choice of these enterprises demonstrates that NestJS can support the full lifecycle needs from startups to large enterprises. Number six, 10 compelling reasons to choose NestJS in 2025. One, long term support guarantee. The, ne the NestJS team has secured Series A funding and committed to maintenance until at least 2030. Number two, continuous version iterations. The version 10 ver V10 version released in 2024 added native Prisma support and GraphQL federation 2.0. AI error adop adaptation. Official launch of NestJS AI module seamlessly integrating OpenAI Anthropic APIs. Number four, cloud na native friendly. Perfectly adopts to K8, serverless, and Docker. Abundant, uh, abundant learning resources. Over 500 paid courses worldwide with official documentation in multiple languages. Vast talent market. 45% annual growth in SJS. Developer positions on LinkedIn. Oh, there you go. That's what, uh, what, I, that's what I've heard. Low migration cost. Enables gradual replacement of it existing express applica express applications number eight ex excellent testing experience built in just integration with dependency injection simplifying unit testing number nine graphql best practices both code first and schema first development modes number 10 active community over 3 million weekly npm downloads with 92 percent issue response rate well i i think i'm very convinced I'm yeah. I'm excited to. I'm even more excited to learn NestJS now. Number seven, future outlook. NestJS is next five years. The NestJS team announced that their future roadmap at the 2024 developer conference. 2025 introduced server component support for front and backend component sharing. 2026 native WebAssembly support to enhance performance for computationally intensive tasks. 2027 AI assisted development toolchain for automatically generating code that follows best practices. These plans indicate that NestJS not only meets current needs, but is also actively positioning itself for future technological stand technological trends. That's really cool to see that they have uh, their outlook like this. But what about 8, 9, and 2027, 8, 9, and 2030? Because it will be supported by them. But I, I joke, but I'm sure they have something in mind. But uh, with the rapidly developing technology, I think it's hard to look beyond. I mean, even looking beyond two, looking at two years time, one year time, that's difficult. But yeah, this seems like a, NestJS sounds like the team that works at NestJS sounds um very onto it. Conclusion. In the rapidly changing world of JavaScript, NestJS's enduring popularity is no accident. It addresses team collaboration issues with a structured architecture, improves code quality through deep TypeScript integration, reduces development costs with a rich ecosystem, and has gained industry recognition for its enterprise-grade DNA. Choosing NestJS in 2025 means choosing a proven backend development tech methodology, whether for startup MVP development or core system refactoring in large enterprises. NestJS provides uh, appropriate support. This is the core reason it can transcend technological cycles and maintain its vitality. If you are still hesitant about backend framework selection, give NestJS a chance. It might become one of the longest used frameworks in your career. Yeah, I think this is definitely what I need to do. I need to give NestJS a try. I think another thing is that I use React and I haven't extended it to TypeScript yet. That's another thing that um, will be 
yeah, something that I need to do as well. But for the non-users of Nest.js, are you guys convinced to start learning, to get excited for it? And for the users of Nest.js, do you agree with this? Or maybe you hate it? Maybe there are many downsides or do you love it? Let me know. I'm really curious. I really want to know. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Like and subscribe. Bye.